Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. Today we're going to look at adding and subtracting polynomials. So in my last video we learned about being able to name polynomials and tell the difference between one polynomial versus another. We also talked about simplifying and putting things in standard form. So those are two things that are really going to come into play in this video. If you're still a little unsure about combining like terms, I would definitely watch my last video before you start trying to tackle adding and subtracting polynomials. So in this video, we're going to look at an example of adding polynomials, and then we're going to look at a second example of subtracting polynomials. The first step is to understand that anytime we have something out Anytime we have a set of parentheses, whatever is right here uh, is being multiplied by what's in the parentheses. So if there's nothing there, there's an understood one. So this means that this entire parentheses is being multiplied by an understood one. I like to walk students through this process that this is one times four x squared which is 4x squared. This is 1 times 6x, which is positive 6x. 1 times positive 7, which is positive 7. So now we would go ahead and look at my second polynomial, which also has a set of parentheses around it. And what that means is there's an understood positive 1 in front of those parentheses that needs to be distributed to get rid of the outside parentheses. So we'll do the same thing again. Positive 1 times positive 2x squared is positive 2x squared. Positive 1 times 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 9x is negative 9x. So a lot of teachers skip over that step and they say, okay, just you're adding, so just get rid of the parentheses and, and combine like terms. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but as you'll see when we get over here in a minute, this step of you distributing the one is actually pretty important. Even though when we multiply a positive one times anything, it doesn't change the number, once we get a negative, it will. So that's why I really like to show that step, even though it seems kind of like okay, well, we just ended up with the same thing. I think, it's, I think it's important to show. So now that we've gotten rid of our parentheses, we need to go ahead and combine any like terms that we have. So I've got a 4x squared here, and then I also see an x squared here. Um, in my last video, we talked about combining like terms, and that when we're adding or subtracting, we have to have the same variable, x and x, and the same exponent. So they both would have to have an exponent of two. So I can't combine this 4x squared and say this 6x. Um, a lot of students will say, oh, well they both have x, but this one has an understood exponent of one. So it's not the same exponent. We can't combine them through adding. So let's, let's combine what we can. So four plus two, some students like to circle what they're combining. If that works for you, please do it. Notice I'm, com I'm circling the sign in front of the 2x squared as well. That's really important because that sign is attached to the 2x squared. 4 plus 2 would be positive 6. x squared and x squared stays x squared. So our ver when we're adding or subtracting, our variable and exponent stay the exact same. So let's see what else we can combine. I've got a positive 6x and a negative 9x. So I can go ahead and combine those two. 6 minus 9 is a negative 3. So that negative is, will end up being my subtraction sign. And my variable and exponents stay the exact same. Lastly, to combine, I've got my two constants that I can combine. So 7 plus 1 is positive 8. 
So this is as far as I can take this problem because um, I've combined all my like terms. It's important to note that I did write my answer in standard form. So I wrote my highest exponent and then in descending order of exponents and I have my constant last. So just for fun, just for review, let's go ahead and name this polynomial that we've created. Remember polynomial names have a first and last name. The first name is based on its degree, and then in this case we have a degree of 2, um, so remember we call that quadratic. And for its second name we look at how many terms does it have, so how many sections separated by either an adding or subtracting sign. So in this case we have 1, 2, 3. So remember just like a tricycle has three wheels, this is a trinomial because it has three terms. So that is adding polynomials. Let's look at an example now of subtracting polynomials because it's a similar concept but a little bit different. Um, in the same way that we had the one outside of this parenthesis, we also would have a one here. So there's a positive one out here that needs to be distributed throughout this whole problem, um, throughout this whole parenthesis, um, to get rid of the parentheses. So we would distribute this one to every single part of the problem. So 1 times 2x cubed is 2x cubed. Positive 1 times 5x squared is positive 5x squared. And positive 1 times negative x3 is just negative 3x. So now coming to the second polynomial, um, in the same way that we had an understood one outside of this, we have an understood one outside of here, but it's a negative one. We also need to distribute this negative one through this whole polynomial. And the thing about multiplying a negative one is that it's going to change the sign of whatever is within the polynomial. So let's see this in action. Negative 1 times positive x cubed is now going to give me negative x cubed. Negative 1 times negative 8x squared is going to give me a negative times a negative is a positive 8x squared. A negative 1 times a positive 11 is going to give me a negative 11. So that's why I really like to show this step of distributing the one even when it's positive because it's happening whether it's positive or negative. So now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's combine our like terms. Looking through here, I've got a 2x cubed and a negative x cubed that I can go ahead and combine. So 2 minus 1 would be just 1. So it would just be x cubed because remember our variable and exponent stay the exact same when we're adding or subtracting. Next I've got a positive 5x squared and a positive 8x squared I can combine. So 5 plus 8 is a positive 13 and then it would stay x squared. Next, I've got just this negative 3x to the first power, and there's nothing to combine that with, so it'll just stay the same. And my constant, negative 11, there's nothing to combine that with, so that will just stay the same. So this is as low as it can go because I can't combine these terms any further. So I'm going to go ahead again just for fun, just for review, I'm going to name this polynomial. So I'm going to give it a first name based on its degree. In this case, my highest exponent, my degree, is 3. We call that cubic. And my second name is based on how many terms it has. So how many sections? So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4. And if you remember anything 4 or above, we just call polynomial. So this is a cubic polynomial. This would be a quadratic trinomial. That is adding and subtracting polynomials, kind of in a nutshell. In my next video, we're going to talk about multiplying polynomials. So it's going to become very important to remember those terms, the difference between a binomial and a trinomial, and being able to distinguish those. So keep watching that first video if you need practice with that. This is Miss Smith with Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.